I'm going to show you how to do exploratory data analysis of terrorist attack around the world. We will be using a data set called Global Terrorism Dataset. If you want to download the data set, you can check the link in the description and it will take you right to the website where you can download the data set. So the first thing we are going to do is I'm going to import all of the statements. So I'm So this code imports four Python packages, namely NumPy, Seaborn, Pandas, and Matplotlib. So this line import NumPy as NP. This line imports the NumPy package and renames it as NP. NumPy is a package for scientific computing with Python, and it provides support for arrays and matrices, as well as mathematical functions to manipulate all of the arrays. Then we got import Seaborn as SNS. This line is going to import the Seaborn package and rename it to SNS. Seaborn is a data visualization library based on Matplotlib, which provides additional functionality and more user-friendly interface. After that, we got import Pandas as PD. This line imports the Pandas package and renames it as PD. Pandas is a data manip manipulation library that provides tools to read, write, and analyze data in various formats, including CSV, Excel, and MySQL, and many more. We will be using CSV, so we don't have to worry about the rest of them. And then this line import Matplotlib.py plot. This line will impro impro import the PyPlot module from the Matplotlib package and rename it as PLD. Matplotlib is a data visualization library for Python, and PyPlot is a module within Matplotlib that provides a MATLAB-like interface for creating plots and charts. Let's run this. And now the data I import, so I'm going to call it error. And then copy path, paste. And after that, if there is some bad lines of data, so I'm going to make on bad lines, it is going to skip and send the encoding to Latin and query of us. Oh, sorry. So this code snippets read a CSV file containing the global terrorism data set and it loads into a Panda data frame, which is this, and which is called the terror. It also sets options to display up to 500 columns, which I need to set. So the terror is equal to pd.read CSV. And this is a function, this part, this function is a part of Panda's library, which is formerly used for data manipulation and analysis is Python. The function reads a CSV, which is a comma separated values file and converts into a data frame object. And this thing contains slash global. This is the path of the CSV file containing the global terrorism data set. It is located within a Google Colab platform. I have already imported it. I have downloaded it and imported it into Google Colab. Uh, on bad lines, on bad lines equals skip. So this is an optional parameter that tells the pd.read CSV function how to handle lines in CSV file that cannot be passed. In this case, it is set to skip, which means any problematic lines will be skipped and the function will continue, continue reading the rest of the file. And after that, encoding is equal to Latin. This is another optional parameter that specifies the character encoding to be used when reading the CSV file. The Latin encoding is used here because the dataset may contain characters that are not part of the default UTF-8 encoding. This ensures that the file is read correctly without any encoding-related errors. So that's it. Moving on. Now let's just see the shape. The answer should be 181691. Oh, okay. So this one, pd.set underscore option display. This function is part of Pandas library and it used to set the value of a specified option. In this case, the option is being to set display dot max underscore column. This is the option key that specifies the maximum number of columns to be displayed when a Panda data frame is printed or viewed. 500 is the assigned value to the display max column. Option by setting it to 500, you will be able to view up to 500 columns at once when exploring the data frame. This can be helpful when dealing with a large data set that may contain many columns as it always allows you to see more data at once without having to scroll or pignate through the output. Now, terror.shape. This code returns the shape of the terror data frame, which is the number of rows and columns in the data frame. 
Terror dot shape. This now returns a tuple containing two values. The number of rows, which is 84,293, and the number of columns, which is 135 in the Terror data frame. The output will be in the form of number of rows, comma number of columns. So the output is correct. And yes, we are good to go. Now let's see how our data set looks. So terror dot head. We should have around 84,000 rows and almost 135. Yeah, everything looks all right, like it should be. Now the first thing I am going to do is extracting columns. I will explain once I have written, I will explain it in much detail, so don't worry about it. So let me run this to check everything is all right. No errors. Okay. So uh, this code creates a list called calls, which is basically short for columns that contains the name of 21 columns that are of interest in the Terra data set or the Terra data frame. So this line, this entire line creates a list called calls and assign it to a sequence of 21 string, each of which corresponds to the, a column name in the Terra data frame. These columns are contained information about the year, month, and the day of the attack, the location and the target of the attack, the type of the attack, the name of the group responsible, the number of death and injuries, and other details about the weapon and the motive of the attack. So these are the columns which we are going to focus mainly on. After that, we are going to do So this code creates a new data frame called terror underscore clean by selecting a subset of column from the terror data frame. Terror underscore clean pd dot data frame data is terror columns is code. This line creates a new data frame called terror underscore cleaning by passing the terror, terror data frame as the data argument to the pd dot data frame function. The column is set to calls, which are these, which is a list of column names that we want to include in a new data frame. The resulting terror underscore clean data frame will only contains the column specified in the calls list. So we only need these columns that's it apart from that it can remove everything now as there are 21 columns we have assigned 21 columns in this one so i'm going to try and print the terror dot shape again but for this one terror dot key underscore dot shape and the resulting number should be 21 so terror underscore queen dot shape it should be 21 yep now moving on So terror underscore clean dot is null dot sum. This first line, this line post called the is null method on the terror underscore clean data frame, which returns a data frame of the same shape as terror clean with the values true in cells where there is a missing value and false otherwise. The sum method is then called on the, this data frame to compute the sum of missing values in each column. The output is a series that lists the number of missing values for each column in the terror clean data frame. For example, if n kill column has 100 missing values and cities column has 50 missing values, the output would be a series with values year zero, city missing. So there are 74 missing values in city, 3,953 in latitude, and one in attack type, one in name of the group, and one in weapon type, 66,000 in motives. So these are the, all the null properties, all the where there's no data in the data set. These are empty values. So it's good to check how many, because when we perform our exploratory data analysis, this is going to affect us a lot. So that's why you should always find out how many After that, let's just print one more. 
the lambda so clean dot head and we just before to see that we got 21 columns yes everything is right so we can continue let's move on and now let's change the name of the columns to more nicer one because right now as you can see this is attack type one dot let's just change it to attack type so let's rename all of the columns This is going to be here. This is going to be one. This is going to be day. This is going to be country and name. That I want to this is going to be attack type. This is of like one. This is going to be target type, which is just target type. Right. So, type two, which is name. Subtype so two. G name is this is going to be group and so name name of the group and the type one of DC this is type name source. This is just going to be source. This is also DC. This is going to be human. This is going to be killed. And, and what is this is going to be the number of people who are wounded. In detail. This is going to be the weapon detail. At least one minus of the HCA, this is going to be nationality. That's it, and then in place, I don't know, place is So this all, this is going to change the name of the all of the columns. So it is more easier for us to understand. And the in place is equal to true. This parameter means that the original error underscore clean data frame is modified in place rather than creating a new new data frame so it won't save as a new data frame actually it is going to completely change all of these in the previous data frame it won't create a new data frame because of this one line now let's set an option to set how many display how many things it is going to display so display max so columns that is going to be part of it. now let's just see that whether uh, and we have changed the name of our column, so we now need to see that has it really changed or are we still save? As you can see, the G name is now group name, web type is regional, killed, W is now wounded, and tally is nationality. So everything looks fine. Now let's move on. So now we are going to extract the features of the data set so we can perform EDA or exploratory data analysis. To do that, I'm going to do I think it's in, yeah, it's not up to in small. Again, this is in small. All right. So, terror underscore clean and casualty. This code creates a new column called casualties in terror clean data frame. The square brackets are used to select a column in the data frame, but since the column name doesn't exist yet, Pandas create a new column with a given name. 
So, and after that, equals to terror clean wounded plus terror killed. This code calculates the value for the casualties column. It does this by adding the values in the wounded column and the killed column for each row in the terror underscore clean data frame. This operation returns a panda series containing the sum of the wounded and killed values for each row. This new series is then assigned as the value for casualties column in the terror underscore clean data frame. In summary, this line creates this line of code creates a new column in terror underscore clean data frame that calculates the total number of casualties for each terrorist attack by adding the wounded and killing columns together. This column provides a convenient way to analyze the overall impact of the terrorist attack. And now we need to check that whether our column has been added, which is casualties. We just are going to do error underscore clean dot head and run it. Oops, 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 oops. We need one. Yeah, now it's now we'll just see. So it should be casualties. As you can see, casualties is number of wounded plus number of killed. So killed is one, wounded is zero. So one plus zero is one, and that's our casualty. Good, good, good. Everything is working all right. The cars, everything working fine. Now about nationalities. So now let's do something about the nationality. So nationality. So talk nationalities and unknown. There should be another n. So this code creates a data frame called nationality top by selecting only the rows from the terror clean data frame where the values in the nationality column is not unknown. Terror underscore clean brackets nationality exclamation mark until known. This expression returns a Boolean mask that is true for the rows where the value in the nationality column is not known, not unknown and false otherwise. This thing, this thing together, this code uses a Boolean mask to select only the rows from the terror clean data frame where the nationality column is not unknown. The resulting data frame is assigned to nationality top. In summary, this line of code creates a new data frame called nationality top that includes only the rows from the terror clean data frame where the values in the nationality column is known. This new data frame will be used for analyzing patterns and trends related to nationality and terrorist attacks. Nationalities, right? Nationalities, and so top. Nationalities. So this code creates a new data frame called nationality type that shows the count of each nationality in the nationality top data frame. This nationality underscore top nationality, this code selects the nationality column from the nationality top data frame. Dot value counts. This code returns a series. This code returns a series containing the count of each unique value in the nationality column. In other words, it counts how many times nationality appears in the nationality underscore top data frame. Reset index, this code converts the resulting series into a data frame and resets the index. This means the resulting data frame will have two columns, index and nationality. The index column contains the unique nationalities and the nationality columns contains the count of each nationality. The entire thing, this code creates a data frame called nationality type by changing together the method described in this, which I already talked about. The nationality underscore type data frame contains count of each nationality in the nationality top data frame with one row per nationality. So now we are going to see which country the terrorists belong to, most of them. So nationality type, what we name. So this code renames the this code renames the national columns of nationality underscore type data frame to more descriptive names. This line, this code uses the rename method to rename the columns of the nationality type data frame. The column parameter is set to dictionary with the keys index and nationality, which corresponds to the old column names and the value of nationality counts, which correspond to the new column names, respectively. The in place is equal to true parameter means that the original data frame is modified in rather than creating a new data frame. The resulting nationality type data frame has two columns, nationalities and counts. Nationalities and counts. The nationality column contains the unique nationalities in the top nationality top data frame and the counts column contains the count of each nation nationally. 
now let's see all of the name of the group of terrorists. So, terror and so clean. Nationalities. Unique. So, this code, oops, this code creates returns an array of unique values in the nationality column of the terror underscore clean data frame. Terror underscore clean dot nationality is this part of this code. This part selects the nationality column from the terror clean data frame. Dot unique, this code returns an array containing the unique values in the nationality columns. In other words, it returns a list of all the unique nationalities that appear in the terror underscore data frame. For example, if the nationality columns contain values such as United States, India, Pakistan, or unknown, the output of the code would be an array which is United States, India, Pakistan, and unknown. Now let's work on the groups. So, Mm. So this code creates a new data frame called terror group organization that shows the account of each terrorist group in the terror clean data frame. The first line, this code creates a new data frame called terror by selecting only the rows from the terror clean data frame where the values in the group name column is not unknown. The resulting data frame includes only the terrorist attacks where the group responsible is known. After that, this line, this code returns a series containing the count of each unique value in the group name column of the terror data TER data frame. In other words, it counts how many times each terrorist group appears in the TER data frame. Dot reset index. This code converts the resulting series into a data frame and resets the index. This means that the resulting data frame will have two columns, index and group name. The index column contains the unique terrorist group name and uh, the group name column contains the count of each group. Now, this line, this line, uh, hold up. This line renames the column of the terror group organization data frame to more descriptive, more descriptive names using the rename method and the column parameter set to a dictionary with the old column name as keys and the new column names as values. The in place is equal to true parameter means that the original data frame is modified in place rather than creating a new data frame. The resulting terror group organization data frame has two columns, group name and counts. The group name column contains the unique value terrorist group in the terror clean data frame and counts the column containing the account of each group. Now let's find out city. So everything all looks all right. Everything we wanted to change has changed and we don't want to change anything. So let's move on. Let's find out the cities. So this code creates a new data frame called city1 by selecting only the rows from the terror clean data frame with the values in the city column is not unknown. Terror underscore clean city unknown. This expression returns a Boolean mask that is true for rows where the value in the city column is not unknown and false otherwise. This part of the code, this code uses the Boolean mask to select only the rows from the top from the terror clean data frame where the city column is not unknown. The resulting data frame is assigned to the variable city1. In summary, this code, this line of code creates a new data frame called city1 that includes the includes only the rows from the terror clean data frame. Where the value in the city column is known, this new data frame will be used for analyzing patterns and trends related to cities and terrorist attacks. After that.
So this code creates a new data frame called city CLN that shows the count of each city in the city one data frame. This code returns a series containing the count of each unique values in the city column of the city one data frame. In other words, it counts how many times each city appears in the city one data frame. Dot reset index, this code converts the resulting series into data frame and resets the index. This means that the resulting data frame will have two columns, index and city. The index column contains the city's name and the city column contains the count of each city. This code renames the columns of the city CLN data frame to more descriptive name using the rename method with the column parameter set to dictionary with the old column names as the keys and the new column name as values. The in place true parameter means that the original data frame is modified in place rather than creating a new data frame. Now let's see the weapon type, what kind of weapon they have used, weapon type. So now this code creates a new data frame called web type and also CLN, which is this one. That shows the count of each weapon type in the Terra Clean data frame where the weapon type is known. The first line, this expression returns a Boolean mask that is true for rows where the values in the weapon type column is not unknown and false otherwise. Terra Clean, this also, this code, this entire thing returns a Boolean mask to select only the rows from the Terra Clean data frame where the weapon type is not unknown. The resulting data frame is assigned to the variable WP. This code returns a series containing the count of each unique value in the weapon type column of the WP data frame. In other words, it counts how many times each weapon type appears in the WP data frame. Dot reset underscore index. This code converts the resulting series into a data frame and resets the index. This means that the resulting data frame will have two columns, index and web type. The index column contains the unique weapon type and the weapon type column contains the count of each weapon type. Now this code renames the column of the weapon type CLN data frame to more descriptive name using the rename method with the columns parameter set to a dictionary with the old column names as keys and the new column names as values. The in place is equal to true parameter means that the original data frame is modified in place rather than creating a new data frame. The resulting web type underscore CLN data frame has two columns, weapon types and counts. The weapon type column contains the unique weapon types in terror dot underscore clean data frame and the counts column contains the count of each weapon type. So counts is what how many times this weapon has used and weapon type, this data is derived from terror underscore clean data frame and assign it to WP. Now the reason you are guys are here for EDA or terrorism. Let's start. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's print the head once. Now let's we are going to find the nationality. Now this is to see that which nation got the most attacks. So this code creates a bar plot using the Seaborn library, SNS, as you can see, SNS.barplot. And that this chart visualizes the top 10 nationalities that have suffered the most terrorist attack according to the global terrorist data frame, data set. This part of the code creates a new figure object using the PLT dot subplot, which is a specified size of 15 by 10 in inches, which sets the width to 15 and 10 15 and the height to 10. The second part, this code, this code creates a vertical bar plot 
using the Seaborn's bar plot function, which take in several arguments. X is equal to counts. This sets the column of the nationality type data frame as the X variable. Y is equal to nationality. This sets the nationality columns of the nationality type data frame as the Y axis variable. Data is equal to nationality type near 10. This sets the data to be used as the nationality type data frame, but only for the first 10 rows. This part, this sets the palette color and the title to the nations suffer the most targets. The resulting plot is a vertical chart that shows the 10 nationalities that have suffered the most terrorist attack with the number of attack represented by the length of the bars. So at number one, we have Colombia, which, which suffered the most terrorist attack. I think there is some mistake going on. There are a lot of fuck Colombia is because it be. Let me run all of the cells again and then we'll see what's happening. Now it's working fine. Oh, that means that there was some problem in importing the data set. It was not from my side, it was from Google Collab. So this now, this is true. The most attack which country received was Iraq, which is around 25, <laughs> holy shit. That's a tiny nation with way too much of attacks. Then Pakistan, yeah, I understand. India in Kashmir and in Northeastern state, yeah. Afghanistan, which is ruled by Taliban, actually got more than 10,000. Fair enough, fair enough. Round of a plus for Taliban. Colombia, I don't know why. Philippines, I don't know why. United States got 5,000 terrorist attacks. I think the uh, mass shooting and the school killings are also counted as terrorist attacks. That's why United States. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> Never thought that USA would be in top 10. I guess you guys make it to top 10 in every single data set or chart. So now let's find out the groups which were responsible for the attack. So. As we can see, Taliban was responsible for the most terrorist attack. And then Islamic State. And then this is shining. Well, what kind of organization is this? Shining. Yes, oh, Communist Party in Peru. That's why the Peru has more attacks because, okay. Al Shabaab, I don't know. Parvido Marzo Liberation Front. This is most probably in. Where is this FM Ellen? In El Salvador. Kurdistan mm -hmm. Walker Party is in Turkey. Boko Haram is in Irish Republican Army is also which carried the most attack. Mm -hmm. But the data set is from 1980. So yeah, in that time, there could be a chance. Now let's see which cities got the most attack. So. Let's not set any pilots. I'll just set data. Okay, so Baghdad and Karachi are the top ones as Baghdad is the nationality which suffered the most serious attacks. Second was Lima. Second was Pakistan, actually. Yeah. Second was Pakistan. And Karachi. Lima actually suffered. I never knew these things that Chile suffered so much. I know Mosul, Belfast is again because IRA in this you can see Irish Republican Army, so they are active. Santiago, Mogadishu in Madagascar, San Salvador is El Salvador, Istanbul, Athens, Bogota, 
Beirut Medellin cartel, which is in Colombia, Benghazi. You know, this is pretty interesting. I won't lie. This is really interesting. Now let's see the weapon types, which what kind of weapons were used in majority of attacks. As we can see, the majority of damage was done by explosive. Two truck, truck bombs are majority, use majority in Middle East or Afghanistan, so that's not too much. But bombs, firearms, meal, chemicals, that's pretty interesting. So now let's see the attack type. First. Oh, uh, it's not platter, it's pallet. So let me explain the code process. So this, so this code creates a count plot using the C1 library that visualizes the frequency of each type of attack used by terrorists included in the global terrorism data set. This part of the code, this code creates a new figure object using PLT dot subplots with a specified size of 30 by 15 inches. This part of the code creates a count plot using the C1 count plot function library function, which takes in several arguments. Y is equal to attack type. This sets the attack type column of the terror underscore clean data frame as a Y axis. Data is equal to terror underscore clean. This sets the data to be used as the terror clean data frame. Palette in front of this sets the color, color palette to be used in the plot. Order is equal to terror attack type dot value underscore counts index. This orders the X axis. PLT ticks, this is the size. And title is the title, which are, or now we have also set the size of the title, 20. And now let's discuss about So majority of things were carried out by bombing and explosions. Holy shit. Now I'm interested in finding, uh, let's say, what were the target types? What things were targeted by the terrorists? So created on subplots. Which size? 15 by 6. If you want to download or see the entire explanation, just check in the link in the description and you will find an entire article on the subject which explains everything in great detail. So type, value, bounds, dot index, build it out, it sticks, rotation is equal to 90, build it out, title. Target type, and then we are just going to do one thing, and that is PLT 
Donc, oh, Let me so I forgot the name of the column. So actually, this control C. Now we can see that civilians were the people who were target after that police security and then military. So majority of people who lost their life were civilians. which is a really bad thing because innocent people were the most who lost their life. And that is not good. The least who was the internet infrastructure, oil tankers, personnel, firefighters, military marine time, other facilities, civilian marine time, political rallies, head of states were actually lower. Construction was one of the most hit. Retail grocery because people go there, that's why. Now let's see what is with the target type. So here. Oh, oh, oh. Police buildings, headquarters, stations, schools were the most target. Unnamed civilians, military patrol, convoy. Pharmaceutical, medical hospitals were more attacked. That's it, folks. Thank you for watching. And if you want to download it, check the link in the description. And bye-bye.